So hi everybody, welcome back. You know who I am. This is a new horse in training, Mr. Mateo. He is a five-year-old um, purebred Frisian from the Netherlands. Um, so with all new horses, I do an evaluation, I do an assessment to see what he knows what he doesn't know, how he responds, how he acts. Um, will you grab, yeah, lots of diarrhea. Thank you, hon. Um, so this is stallion-like behavior. I noticed that immediately. He's five, he is a gelding. Um, I noticed a couple of traits about him. He spent his first day and night in the paddock. He's allowed out when Zor's not here. And the um, canting of the screaming all the time is not a good sign. And it's uh, not your typical scream for a horse that's buddy sour and doesn't like to be alone. That, you can go on in, hun. That typical scream with that kind of pitch is very stallion-like. Um, the second trait of a stallion is they smell manure. They're always smelling, pawing, and then pooping on top of other manure. That's a dead giveaway. The third would be also how he cocks his tail to the side um, when he's sniffing. Um, very territorial um, characteristics. <clears throat> so anyway, we're going to have a look-see with him. Um, so Clarissa, I let Zor out so he could go to the bathroom, but if you can bring him back in, that'll be great. Thanks, hon. We're just going to work in the paddock right outside his stall. Um, this guy doesn't really, he doesn't know anything right now except, ah, oh, there he goes again, traditional training and traditional handling. He did not have diarrhea yesterday. <laughs> But we will have to be careful here because he's not used to eating a lot of grass. He's been on a dry lot up in, I think, the Ozarks are in, Ozarks are in Arkansas? Missouri, the Ozarks in Missouri, sorry. I should know my geography better. And um, for whatever reason, they've kept him separated from other horses. I mean, I understand. They don't know how to handle the behavior. And so he's not socialized. and then that you'll see Zor. That's why Zor is being so dominant with the pinning of the ears and very territorial also, which I want Zor to do because this is part of socializing. Um, it's just part of it. But anyway, so he's got to get slowly introduced to grass and he will be by himself for a while. That is for sure. All right, good. So what I want to work on, and anybody can do this if you follow my method, is I want to work on getting his attention and his focus in here before we, before we start with any skill technique training. Um, he doesn't lead well, he runs all over you, very fractious. He just hasn't been taught how to pay attention or calm his mind or be focused, which is a discipline. He just hasn't been taught that. <laughs> so we're going to work on him just learning how to connect. Now one of the things I want to mention that happens, it happens every time, especially um, with horses that don't have a lot of good ground habits or ground manners and they walk all over you. He's going to have to learn, he already started learning this yesterday, how to move away from pressure both uh, rhythmic pressure and then steady pressure, touching. So I've got to teach him how to respect my space for safety reasons, that is number one. And it's not very pretty in the beginning, you guys. You know, you're gonna be teaching your horse how to move away from steady pressure. There you go. He's smart, we started this yesterday. And in the beginning, he would not move. He would just stand there and then he'd just get a higher head or he'd turn his head. 
So I just kept increasing the speed and getting closer and closer until it taps and taps. And of course, it's tapping them in the nose, tapping them on the neck, and he's like, oh. And all I want to do is create enough annoyance right now, irritate him enough that he moves away from the contact. And eventually he'll learn that when he sees this technique or this movement from me, that it means to don't come any closer or back away. But it doesn't start there. And a lot of horses will push right through that kind of pressure and because they're scared. So horses are naturally oppositional to begin with. And so it's, this is how you get to see if your horse, what self-preservation mode they choose and what kind of personality trait they have. So a more dominant, secure, confident horse is going to push right through you. Fight. A more passive or, thank you, Han, a more passive or submissive horse is going to use flight or freeze mode. Freeze mode means they just stand there, don't do anything. And the flight mode means they run right through you too. You just have to be uh, fast enough to catch the expression in your horse's eye because they'll clearly let you know when they're scared and it's a flight or when they're like, hey, I'm taking you down or you're going to move, not me. All right. So again, connection, joining. Good boy. And lots of reward and praise. I'm going to close this door, Sabrina, so you'll probably have to come a little higher. Hi, buddy. Nope, we don't do that. So I'm just going to move them around. Hi, handsome. Horseman's handshake. Because we're teaching him how to be right now. You know, we want to teach him good habits, ground manners. So when to come, always come when I ask you to come into me. Tons of positive praise and reward and ease and comfort. and how to help him connect his mind and his emotions, the relationship, that'll come in time, but how to connect mentally, emotionally, and of course physically through the movement, how to connect with me. And when we start doing these wonderful baby steps, we can start laying down the foundation for our horses to get quiet to learn how to quiet the mind, discipline the mind, to become more focused and not so fractious, to be able to connect on a deeper level energetically, especially when I want to ground him in my space. And he'll realize when he's ready. So yeah, you know, you, these are all your foundational building blocks. Hi, does that feel good to uh, Create the mindset in your horse, the trust, the confidence, the mindset needed to learn how to work with you, to learn how to learn. This is the beginning of training, educating your horse, developing your horse. We're not here to just make it happen and go through the motions. He's already had that. He's five and he's already had classical dressage training in the Netherlands. He already knows how to pull a cart and he looked miserable. And he was emotionally and physically, nope, this is where just block that. Nope, so he has to realize he cannot go through you. So I'm gonna move him away from there. That's all, and then I'm gonna get here. And I'm gonna stand here. I'm gonna interrupt that, shut that behavior down right now. So I wanna interrupt his level of anxiety get him to refocus. And also in the process, I can teach him all about steady pressure and rhythmic pressure, right guys? He gets very excitable. It's a lot of horse to handle right now. So what he needs most of all is to learn how to get quiet. No, there goes the diarrhea. That's all stress. 
horses that are separated and not allowed to be with other horses, they can adopt one of two behaviors. They can become buddy sour like he is, where he's gonna scream out and get really anxious and worried that he's alone once he starts forming a relationship or is allowed to be next to other horses. Um, it'll be harder for him to be separated. There you go. Or two, they just <laughs> shut down completely, um, become depressed. You, I like that you're slowly asking, but I don't trust you. Good, I love that he's slowly creeping in, but I'm not gonna take that for granted because we don't know each other. So I'll let him, because he's, he's trying, he's asking very slowly, very quietly, can I come over here? He's asking. So this is where I can use steady pressure, one on the nose and one on the neck. Yep. And as you can see, I'm keeping my feet still when I twirl this rope. It's up to him to get out of the way. All the while, I'm standing here in a position of grounding and centering my energy, which I teach. That's really important, is I, vent, I want him to connect to that energy. He may not be able to for, for a while, because he doesn't know how. He never has had to connect with a person. Hi, thank you for looking at me. Good boy. Thank you for looking at me. Nope, nope, you cannot walk through me. Come, move them around, move them around, move them out of there. Come on, nope, yep. And there you go. So I am gonna use the tactic of pressure and release whenever I have an escalating situation. Depends, 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 depends though. Or a situation that needs me to put pressure on him to break his cycle, to make a breakthrough. So that's just me pushing him around and then releasing the pressure to see if he can join me in that release. If that release feels comfortable enough. Right now, the release from pressure doesn't feel better than him staring and looking for Zor. But he is looking at me. So part of teaching a horse in my style to join up, come on, to join up, is to create a space of ease and comfort. Good boy for them. So he doesn't have a relationship with me right now. So we can't, we can't use that. We're gonna be, we're gonna include bonding rituals every day, all right? But we're not there yet. I have to see what he knows, what he doesn't know, and what his aptitude for learning is, because I'm gonna be grooming him. I'm gonna be bathing him every day, or grooming him every day. But I don't wanna groom a horse that's gonna run me over, right? Or be fractious. And for those of you that are not a horse trainer, and Lots of you have horses like this. Older horses, they've been there and done that. Or a new horse that comes to you and is really excited and you know stressed out. I don't want you to be around, be that close to the horse either. So this is a great way to introduce yourself. Come, introduce the method, my method. Come on, yep, you gotta focus on me. That's where the pressure's coming in. And then I'm gonna release. Go back, good lick and chew. So he just doesn't, yeah, he doesn't know any different right now, that's for sure. Ask him to connect, good, I got your eye. Good boy, good boy, handsome. Look at you. He's a little quieter, there you go, there you go. Lots of soft touch, oh, you're so, you're so, you're so precious, so sweet. What was that? That was just the wind, wow, yeah. A little, there you go, handsome, yeah. I wanted to, I want him to learn and he will that being with me is such a great experience, right guys? For all the, all the right reasons. I know, 
I'm gonna brush you down and get some fly spray on you, buddy. Let's see if he'll turn around. Good boy, good boy. Very nice, yeah. So it's not just about the technique, there's a lot of energy work that's happening here. <clears throat> when a horse starts to really connect with you and connects with that energy, it feels so good, the ease and the calm and the clarity feels so good to them as a prey animal. Um, it's much stronger than any technique. I'm just using the technique and moving them around to help him, what, connect with me and to feel me. Oh, you are the sweetest thing. You are definitely a sweetheart. Not a mean bone in your body. Just a little crazy, huh? Gosh, how many horses have you seen, Janine? <laughs> how many horses have you seen over the years like this? Oh my gosh. So here's rhythm again. Yep, he's gotta learn, yep, to move away from it, to respect it, not fear it. Good boy. So I am going to um, bring him out. We're gonna do some more quiet work. So Sabrina, just make sure. I think if you put yourself by the fan and then I'll come out this way. 